opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Shaw Cable Systems or of the station. Through our access policy, we provide the opportunity for community groups and individuals to express their points of view. Welcome to the Fourth Line Hockey Show. I'm your host, Willie Plouffe. I am here at Royal Sports Shop once again with my winger, Gerald Hasby. Gerald, how are you today, buddy? I'm pretty good. You, Willie? You know, I'm doing great. You know, we have a great show today. We got in one of the local wrestlers, Zach Malhai Mercury. We're going a different way today, Gerald. Fourth Line Hockey Show is going to talk a little bit about fundraising. We always do that for charitable events. Um, Zach Malhai Mercury is going to come in, local wrestler, and talk a little bit about that. What do you think about that, Gerald? Pretty cool, pretty cool. I know you're a big wrestling fan. Who was your biggest wrestler that you loved back in the day? Oh, you know what? I have to go one of these to all my fans out there. Woo! Ricky Flair, one of the best ever. Well, I thought you were going to go with the Hulkster. You got it kind of oh, the same hairline. You know, we, Hulkster and I do have some issues. Well, you know what? You kind of <laughs> hey, Beeks, I don't want to give you any comments. I do like your hair. <laughs> Canada says she does put your hair together pretty good in the morning times. Oh, You're looking let's, good. Let's leave the wife's out of this. <laughs> so, great show today. And also, we have Sonny Manake, who's a goalie coach for Winnipeg Blues. And we're going to have Donnie McGilvery. And, and, you know, both great guys. We had Don on before. Sonny's, uh, you know, he's a great uh, goaltender. He's Vancouver Canucks, NDA, you know, Western Hockey League, Mesonat Tigers. He stole some pretty good, you know, headlines, that boy. Yeah, he's going to have some good stories. You know, local kid who played in Medicine Hat, played professional hockey, also played overseas. So he'll shed a lot of light on that subject, you know, for people who wonder what it's like to, to you know, live the hockey life. You know, I always it's it's great also talking to I love talking to the tenders because you know what, they're the last line defense. They stop all the rubber like. Let's, let's face it, to be a tender, you know, you got to be a special kind of dude. They take a lot of shots, a lot of rubber, a lot of puck coming yeah. at you. Do you. Are you born a goaltender or do you become one? I you know, you're born. I think so. You know, and I think Sonny can ask that question when we yeah. bring him on, right? And also when we bring in Coach Don, we're going to talk about, you know, the Blues had a tough time at playoffs. You know, they, they led the league. You know, something went wrong here or there. You know, coaching's pretty tough. Things happen. Well, and, you know, the, the only local Winnipeg-based junior hockey team now in the MJHL. So, you know, for parents and kids who want to get into that avenue of hockey, you know, I'm sure he'll shed, shed a lot of good uh, info on that sort of stuff. So true, Gerald. So we're going to break off. When we come back, we'll bring in Zach Malhai Mercury talking about his fundraising event. Come on. And you know what? This guy is a character. He's a great wrestler. I've seen him smash a couple guys. It's pretty good. We'll be right back at you. Life is all about chances. Made. Given. And taken. Chances missed and chances that change everything. Chances to try, to fail, and then try again. Chances to grow, chances to change, chances to learn, teach, lead. Chances, it's all about what you do with them. Boys and Girls Clubs of Winnipeg, donate, check us out, make the call. Right back at your fourth line hockey show, Royal Sports Shop. Before we went off air, we're talking about bringing in Mile High Mercury, Zach Mile High Mercury from the Winnipeg Wrestling Circuit. Let's bring that big dude in. Mile High, Zach, how are you, big fella? Oh. Uptown Willie, my man, Good Gerald. Good to see you again. You know what? First of all, let, let, no. me, let me start go, this off. Go, buddy, go. Give let me start this off. Now, I just got to ask you something. My man, Uptown Willie, I got to know. What's befitting of Mile High Mercury is always been the first line. It's been the first line of defense. Been, let me tell me a story. The fourth line hockey show. I've seen the show. It's a great show. Tell me something about this fourth line because I, I don't know anything about it. Mile High, I'll tell you, you know what, Zach? We're fourth line guys because my co host here has always been fourth line. I've been starting line all my life in junior hockey, so it came from Gerald Hazzy, right, Beaker? Yeah, I'm a fourth liner. <laughs> Mile high, tell us what, you know, what's going on. Hey, I hear something going on. I hear someone's going to come and crush you in by a big guy named Nash. Is that going to happening down? Well, that, I'll tell you right now, there is a guy, a giant of a human being, coming to Winnipeg to entertain everybody that comes out April 20th to Opera Ultra Lounge. It's going to be a barn burner. It's a rematch from November where I was of unseemly robbed of my title by two men. Kevin Nash and Brett the Hitman Hart. I was never pinned. 
and now for some reason I come here on your show without my title. Now it's not a title match because that title has somehow left the country, left the bill, but it's not about that. It's about revenge, redemption for the one and only Mile High, Zach Mercury. My life, Zach Berger, you're going to be taking down some Thunder taking care of the Nash dude hanging out. You know, Beaks, right here at Royal Sports Shop. I think we can have that match here, maybe rematch sometime in the sports shop. What do you think? I see some brawls upstairs. We could be like tag team oh, tag champions. Team. <laughs> Here we go. Beaker Blue for coming at you. Mahai, tell us, you know, we have this event that's going on, the rematch, is for a fundraising charitable event. Fourth Line Hockey Show always promotes that. Now let's get to a little bit of a serious point about, you know, what's this all about, why we're having it, what's going on. You know, I'd be glad to, Willie. See, the thing is, there's a charity out there I, I wasn't too familiar with for a long time. Um, I was told a little bit about it from my supervisor. I also work security at the MTS Center for Jets games, for rock concerts, everything that goes on there. And a good cause came up to me. Uh, I approached the people at the good people at Ronald McDonald House, and they said they would love to get behind something that I want to bring, a great wrestling show, but also to raise support and awareness for Ronald McDonald House. You know, they work with so many families trying to support them in their, the hardest times when their kids are in surgeries. They have terrible illnesses, you know, trying to make life more comfortable for them. They, they, work their, they work their butts off there and they're the nicest people and I would put all my support behind them and I sure hope the rest of, the rest of Winnipeg uh, hears about this event. It's going to be an awesome event. Everyone's going to have a blast there at Opera Ultra Lounge and what it's going to do is raise awareness and raise some money for a great cause because they sure need it and they sure appreciate it. So that's what we're going to do April 20th at Opera. April 20th at Opera. What time is that gig going on, Mahai? Well, as you probably know, there's a Jets game in the afternoon, and that starts at 2 o'clock, so that's going to end around 5 o'clock. So what we did was we moved the start time of our event to 6.30. Doors are going to open at Opera. It's going to be a, a, a nice transfer. You know, people are going to go and watch a Jets game, cheer, cheer their ass off, and, you know, have fun. Go grab a bite to eat, come to the show, and there we go. We're going to get going right in Opera, 7 o'clock start time. Doors open at 6.30, and it's going to be something else, something to see in Winnipeg. Here. That's going to be excellent, Molly. Now, where can people get tickets or find out about it? What we're going to we've hooked up with uh, two co-op gas stations here in Winnipeg, 1180 Narron Avenue, and also 1947 Henderson Highway. You can get your tickets there. They are they're good, ready to, to give you your tickets there. You just go and tell them you want to see a wrestling match. You want to see Kevin Nash, Zach Mile High Mercury. Also, Boogie's Diner, 1155 Main Street, and there's also Boogie's has been a great partner of. Uh, uh, raising the roof for Ronald McDonald House. They're going to host a meet and greet where you can get your picture and autograph with Kevin Nash before I beat him later on that evening, although I'd like to add. You can get your picture taken with him. He's a, he's a giant. He's a world-renowned superstar. He's going to be there from 12.30 to 2.30 or in the afternoon of Saturday, April 20th. So get down there. You can also get your tickets there. So it's a big day of entertainment. Jets game, wrestling, Famous stars from all over the world going to be at the show. It's going to be just a great day of entertainment. There you go, people. Look it up. Check it out. Fourth Lane Hockey Show. Always support charitable events. We're going to come right back with Sonny Manaka. Get right back at you. Well, that was a lot of energy here at Royal Sports Shop with Mile High Zach Mercury Beaks. People weren't sure what, what they were in for. We were tuning into the Fourth Line Hockey Show, and we had the crazy wrestler. He's got a lot of energy. I tell you, I felt like smashing that chair right over your head. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get a little bit crazier. It'll give you a claw. It's going to get wild. Yeah. But, you know, before we went off the break, we talked about Sonny Manaka, who's played some great hockey. You know, he's played professional hockey. He's played in the dub. Winnipeg boy, he's, he's one of the... Um, goalie coaches for the Winnipeg Blues. We got head coach Donnie McGillivray in here. We're gonna have a great time. We're gonna bring in Sonny Manaka. Sonny, come on in. Welcome to the Fourth Light Hockey Show, buddy. Nice to see you guys. Welcome. Sonny, you know, um, every time here at the Fourth Light Hockey Show, we always start a guest off. You know what? Tell us a little about Sonny Manaka. Well, I, I grew up here in Winnipeg, and uh, actually I, I played junior uh, when I was 15 for Donnie. Uh, he was a coach of the St. James Canadians at that time and uh, moved from there to the Western League and, and uh, had a decent uh, career there. 
Uh, and now I, I'm continuing just to coach with Donnie, teach goaltenders, young goaltenders. Uh, uh, a lot of, I guess, goalie coaches don't want to teach them that young, but uh, I kind of, I kind of like that uh, when I get them like when they're seven or eight. Well, so you know, I tell you something you're pretty modest. Okay, played in the Western Hockey League, MVP. Okay, drafted by the Canucks, played all over, had some fun. Like you, you, you know, you played some pretty good hockey. Like this, let's tell some really good stuff, Sonny. How was the dub playing? You know, four years there, right? You played four years there and winning MVP. That's pretty talented. Uh, it was. I mean, I, I enjoyed the the Western Hockey League. It was uh, it was an experience. Um, you meet a lot of friends. Uh, obviously, the game is is top level uh, for that age group. Um, and again, I mean, just going out there and and uh, playing against other players that you know are gonna you know, move up to the NHL, and uh, it's an eye opener too. I mean. Uh, I was there four years, and uh, I recall one year we, we had an unbelievable team. I, I think Dwayne Sutter was our coach, and uh, we were rated number one in Canada. And uh, there was about 14 of us drafted. Um, so, of course, we thought we were just going to show up and we would, you know, win the Memorial Cup, but it didn't turn out that way. But, it, you know, playing uh, in the Western League was great. Uh, obviously, I mean, uh, there's options to go uh, a little more options available for kids now to go to college and and uh, you know continue from there. Well, Beeks, I tell you, so you said a pretty good career, big guy. Yeah, no, it's uh, you know for a local kid to to go through the ranks playing the you know the best feeder, feeder league to the NHL, the Dub. So when you were playing in the Dub, what years did you play, Sonny? Uh, I played 92 to 94, 95 in there. So let's uh, say, who, who best player you played against? The guy who always caused you fits. Caused me fits. I mean, uh, you know what? I Pat Falloon was there in, in Spokane. He, he was a great player. And then also uh, there was a guy in Tri-Cities. Uh, he still plays in NHL right now. Ray Whitney? That's correct. Ray yeah, Whitney. And he, he was Wizard. excellent. Yeah, but on our team, uh, we had, uh, well, Mike Rache uh, played for San Jose, yep. and then obviously Niedermeyer, that's raised the cup a few times. Uh, those yeah, two he's guys not bad, were, eh? Uh, yeah, he's, he's not a bad. He's talented, kind of, yeah. It's, it's like you, Willie, a little bit. You know, <laughs> he, he still calls me up once in a while. I just don't need to take it easy, but, you know, I, I understand, you know, I tell him things. That's the way it goes. So, Sonny, you went to uh, play in the American Hockey League, and then you went and played in Europe. How was that experience for you? The American Hockey League, I mean, it's it's a little different. Uh, once you get there, it's a job. You're, you know, you want to keep your job, and uh, I guess you got to take your lumps. And, and sometimes guys that come from the Western League, they expect to play, and and want to play often, and, and that's not the case. You got to kind of pay your dues. Um, you know, if you're not a you know first rounder, you know, top rated uh, player, but you got to pay your dues. And and some guys, you know, they want to play right off the bat, and that's that's not the case you get. In my case, it was exactly that, and. And I did a few things that I shouldn't have done, and, and uh, you know I regret it. But uh, um, you know what? It is what it is now. So, and overseas, I mean, uh, again, a great experience. Uh, obviously, the, the the nightlife was uh, excellent over in uh, in London. I uh, can't, can't complain about. Sorry, this this community channel, okay, buddy? We, we, we dial it in. Hold on a that second, buddy. Show. That show. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about Big Ben, right? So, uh, anyways, uh, over there was great. It it, uh, it it really opens up your eyes too. Um, and actually, my roommate over there was uh, Greg Steffen. Remember the goalie, Greg yeah. Steffen? His brother uh, was my roommate, so it was kind of neat. And he kind of took me under his wing uh, for the first year. Uh, the hockey too was uh, it was somewhat like North American, you know, the the London league. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I actually I, I saw I, I I saw him play, you know, in Basingstoke. You were playing there, uh, you know. It seemed like a great atmosphere, very fun fans into it, kind of like soccer. So obviously hockey's real important to you. You love it so you, much. You weren't a, you were a groupie, were you, Beeks? <laughs> you weren't a groupie flying all that way to watch you somebody play hockey. No, <laughs> no, no. I was there delivering some equipment. Let's say <laughs> that, right? Yeah. No, so, so now you're with the Blues. And you, you, know, you obviously love hockey. It's a big part of your life. What do you do with the Blues? Well, I'm the goalie coach there. I mean, I co uh, I've coached with Donnie for, uh, I think, five or six years now. And... Uh, 
you know, what I'm doing there is just trying to tweak the goalies a little bit, uh, you know, not letting the soft goal, obviously, and, and uh, just help them out. I mean, give them some mental advice and, uh, you know, goaltending is a tough position. I mean, uh, you got to be relaxed and, and be focused all the time because it, it is, you let in a soft goal and it's a, a killer for the team, you know. So, but uh, I can't say anything uh, but positives about the Blues and being, uh, uh, with, and with Don and Billy there, it's, it's been great. You know, that, that's like, you, Sonny, I'm, obviously I'm not a goalie, but I played, I pitched in baseball, that mental part of the game is huge, right? That's a big thing for players. Well, for the goaltender, for sure. I mean, uh, I, you're sitting at the end by yourself sometimes in the plays in, in the other end, and, and, you know, say the other goalie's getting seven, eight shots, uh, and you've had one, and, and you, it kind of gets in your head where, you know, i got to make the next save. I don't want to let it in. I don't want the team to see the, the clock. You know, the shots are seven to one. All of a sudden, they score. It's a lot of mental, and, and again, the soft goals are, it's tough for a goaltender to, to uh, rebound from, but the, the good ones do. You yeah, know, and, yeah. and uh, we have two really good goaltenders on, on the Blues. Uh, obviously, they're both going to be 20-year-olds next year, so that's uh, a decision Donnie's going to have. Donnie might be trained some way. Something's going on. Well, well, one of them or me, so we'll <laughs> see. <laughs> Sorry, let's, uh, let's get some a little bit. Let's, we always have fun with our guests, especially guys who play pro hockey and that. Give us one of your favorite stories. I heard a couple from uh, one of your buddies who played with Evan. That There's a snake story and a tire story. You, t you pick one and tell us. Well, the tire story, uh, I'm not positive what date it was, but it was in October and uh, there were three guys involved. Uh, I didn't know this uh, at the beginning, obviously, but uh, I was at my billets and I had a uh, roommate uh, on the team and uh, we slept downstairs and, uh, uh, you know, we heard a little bit of racket outside, but we never thought anything of it and we went to bed. and. So seven o'clock rolls around, we get up, you know, you do your usual stuff and uh, we went outside and uh, go to walk to my vehicle and uh, all of a sudden we look at it and the car's lifted and the tires are underneath and the car's on it, at, on top of the tires. And I'm like, you know, who would do this to me? You know, like it was, uh, I was pretty rattled. So obviously, uh, you know, being a goaltender, I had to be mental tough there, right? And I, and I didn't know really what to do. So I called actually uh, Mike Ratchey. So he's the guy that came over and uh, helped me out with the, the tire situation there. But it was, it was funny and, and no one, uh, I didn't know uh, who did it <laughs> until uh, probably two years ago. So it was pretty neat. No one came clean for a no, while. No one did. Yeah. Well, Gerald, don't get any ideas. I want to walk out there and see my car on top of my tires, buddy. Well, I think you took your bike here, didn't you? Oh, that's right. That's right. I do ride my bike. You know, we, we all need to work out a little bit. This is true. I did not ride my bike here, but Beaks is going at no, me. No, no, no. So, so Sonny, when you were a kid, Growing up, what you know, what goalie? What was your inspiration? What you know, what was your favorite goalie growing up? Growing up was probably I would say Tony Esposito because he's Italian, obviously. But uh, a lot of people used to say Tony O and then Sonny O, right? Yeah. And, and uh, I like the Hawks because of the obviously the the, the crest on the front. Um, but he he was uh, you know I, I kind of watched him a lot and and idled him a little bit. You know, I mean there was lots of goalies though in, in that time, tons of goalies that uh, were excellent so I do have one story about yeah. uh, give it to us uh, about England my first yeah. first game there was in a uh, one of the Benson and Hedges tournament and so uh, whatever we played and I think we won 2-1 and and uh, so you do your sticks around uh, the center ice to thank the fans and then they announce a star so the star of the game uh, got a card in a a cigarettes and a two for it. So I was like, what did I come to? You know, I'm coming over here and this is what you get, right? So it was pretty... Uh, I think that's a... You know what? I'll take the two for it, but not the smokes. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of water yeah, chew or something. Yeah, yeah. Other than that. <laughs> well, Sonny, we want to thank you for coming to the Fourth Line Hockey Show, buddy. Thanks it's very much. It's great having you on and you know, good luck with the Blues with doing that. There's a great squad over there and um, it's awesome. And before we break off, Sonny, we have the two amigos uh, move of the day. Now, you being a tender, what was, you know, Guy coming down in your breakaway, what's the best move you've seen on you? The best move I, on, on, you, my, on, on you. me? Yeah, come on. 
the best move on me. Yeah. Holy, I, I was uh, pretty patient on breakaways, you know, but... Uh, Donnie over there saying top shelf. He's saying, you know, I, I don't think Donnie can even put top shelf on me now, but uh, you know what? I, I remember Vancouver's camp and, and Pavel Burry was there and he did come down on a, on a breakaway and he roofed it and I don't even think I moved. <laughs> you know, it was bar down, so... And I was a little smaller, so you could see the puck over my shoulder and in pretty easy. Well, there you go. Hey, Pavel, I don't know, Jared, I, you couldn't see that. So we, I tell you something, Pavel Brady coming down hard. We're going to break off. We get back. We're bringing head coach Tony McGillivray from Winnipeg Blues. Have a good talk with him. Right back at you. I thought indoor tanning was safe. They said their tanning rays were less likely to cause a sunburn. What you need to know is UV light from indoor tanning can cause premature aging. And even worse, UV light can increase your risk of skin cancer. Including melanoma, the deadliest form of skin cancer. In fact, current estimates are that one in seven Canadians will develop skin cancer. And one person dies from skin cancer about every seven hours. I don't want to be one of them. This message brought to you by the Canadian Dermatology Association. Boy, Sonny Manak was pretty funny. You know, he's had some great stories. And, you know, being a goaltender, being a tender, he, you know, Sonny stopped a lot of rubber. That was a good Pavel Bury story, eh? Bar down. Have you ever gone bar down? Uh, you know what, Gerald? I'm probably, I'm pretty honest all the time. Of course I have. <laughs> like, n never, never. I usually miss the net. That, yeah. that wasn't my forte. I think that was your forte a little bit. I thought yours were the loose gloves. That was kind of your thing. You know, I don't understand why my gloves never stayed on my hands. I always had <laughs> issues. And, you know, I didn't get that. Now we're going to bring in head coach Don McGillie from Winnipeg Blues. And, you know, Don's had a, they, the Blues had a tough year this year. You know, they had a great run. And then, you know, they're running a little bit of trouble. But, you know, great organization, good people over there. Let's bring in Coach Don. Hey, Coach Don, how are you? Coach, good to see you again. Hello, Coach. Welcome to the Fourth Line Hockey Show. Thanks for having me. You were a veteran on our show. This is the second time <laughs> second coming back. Time. You know, Don, we, uh, you know, people know about you already, but let's get a little experience of your hockey coaching. Well, I started uh, at a young age of 21, started coaching minor hockey, and then moved to junior, and I spent uh, the last 23 years coaching in uh, mostly in the Manitoba Junior League, but I spent two years in Prince Albert, one as a head coach, one as an assistant coach and three years at the University of Manitoba. Um, you know, and all, everywhere I've been, uh, it's been really good experiences. I, st I started in St. James and it was a community team and I went f from there to uh, Southeast where it was based in the city and uh, that was a different experience uh, as well. And then uh, went from there to Nipwa, I commuted uh, four, four, four or five times a week to Nipwa there and back every night. So uh, for three years, that was... Uh, well, that must have been a tough slug, though. I, I had some tough <laughs> tough nights in the middle of January and February, yeah. but, uh, um, you know, and then the PA experience was very good and came back, Coach Portage for eight years and... Um, I was lucky enough to get a, an opportunity at the U of M, and now I'm with the Blues. And uh, all, all, all those experiences have been uh, real, real good, and met a lot of great people, and and obviously a lot of good players along the way. And also, Don, you, you've been with um, the elite programs, like you know through Manitoba and all that. Like last time we had you on, you had the under 18s that were going overseas. I'm not under 17s. Under 17s, yep. and we were talking about that, and that was a pretty good squad you had that time. Yeah, I mean, we, those are really uh, good experiences, especially from a coaching perspective. You got a chance to to learn a lot from a lot of different people you get to work with people you never maybe you would never work with uh, get some different ideas and um, the, the under 17 event is uh, just an, a great event you're playing against the top players at that age group uh, so it, it's it's just a, a, a real top-notch event and I, I was fortunate enough to be uh, a guest coach at the under 18s this year and uh, that's kind of goes in hand in hand with being the head coach of the of the uh, provincial team so uh, that, that in itself was worth uh, the, the time commitment and the, and the sacrifices that you make along the way it was I learned a lot at that uh, week-long event in Hockey Canada to treat you, treat you like great uh, like gold for sure he coach has been you know don has got a huge resume Gerald yeah so Don you know coaching elite level hockey for so many years you know where have you seen the big changes whether it be strategy players kids actions all that sort of stuff well, there's, I guess there's been a change in the game, first of all. I think the game's a lot faster than even when, when I started, when I finished playing junior. Uh, you know, you could hook and hold and, and hold up guys through the middle of the ice. So for, for a defenseman, let's say, it's a lot tougher game to play now. You have to really be able to skate. Um, you know, the players obviously changed throughout the years. I think there's a little bit more entitlement now than there was uh, back in the day. I think when, when uh, you know, 
20 years ago, there wasn't, every team didn't have a nice dressing room or didn't supply new equipment every year. You know, you use the same things from year to year. Now, you know, you, every team has a, a nice dressing room. They have good facilities. Uh, you know, they start the year with brand new equipment and, and they get the best sticks and that, that type of thing. So I think the players get treated really well now. And uh, obviously, as you go, go up in the levels, they get treated even better. So it's, uh, that would be the main difference I see. Now, Don, you're, you're coach. You're not just the coach. You're also the manager of the Winnipeg Blues, right? So you you're wearing two hats to that squad. Yeah, I mean it's uh, you know. And at the junior A level, you're, you do wear a lot of hats. There's just, uh, in our organization, I'm the only full-time employee. In some of the other teams in the league, there's you know maybe two but at the most, probably three. And but for the most part, uh, you know the general manager and the coach does a lot of different things. Um, you know, but I, I am responsible for our list and drafting and and um, trading and those types of things. And um, you know that just comes with the territory. But we have you know good people. You know people like Sonny and and Billy Keen and uh, Dan Gorgoski and. A couple of our scouts that do a lot of work, uh, you know, as, as basically as volunteers, and, and they do a great job. I, you know, I tell you, junior A hockey in Winnipeg, Joe, the, it, we went and watched the playoffs, and, you know, it was a lot of fun. And, um, you know, I was pulling for the Blues, and, you know, it's back. I was, you know, because we know the blue guys, Blues, so we had to pull them that way. So I'm not saying anything, but you know what? I wish they would have won. Yeah, well, and, you know, a lot of people out there, you know, the Jets are sold out. There is yeah. other hockey. There is yeah. good elite level hockey that you can come watch. And, you know, the Blues, they play out of the Iceplex there. Yeah. And maybe tell us if, if any of our viewers want, want to bring their kids and family out to a game. And you guys have a spring camp coming up. And Yeah, we, well, I mean, our season's over for this year, but uh, basically next year starts on Friday. We have uh, a spring camp with, uh, you know, midget eligible players, basically. And well, that, that kind of gives us, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, a starting a starting point, you know, for yeah. you know, for for the years down the road. I think that you're always looking to your for your roster to evolve and change, and uh, so the the some of our players that are coming to camp are going to be involved in the Bantam draft and then we'll have uh, you know some players that are on our list that we want to see how they've developed over the year you know the, the Iceplex is a great place for us to play we've, we're fortunate enough to you know you saw if you were at the, any of our, our last couple of playoff games where you know 1200 people there it was great atmosphere you know there's a restaurant upstairs our players uh, have their own dressing room we, we get to practice at a good times and you know it's really a, a great place for us to, to work out of and um, you know Unfortunately, you know, we didn't get as far as we would like, but, uh, you know, you got to give the other team some credit. I think Steinbeck played really well in our series. And, and uh, you know, we had a, a very good regular season. Um, and so for whatever reason, it didn't translate uh, as well in the playoffs. And sometimes that happens. And, you know, hopefully uh, the guys that are returning will learn from that and we can be a better team next year. You know what, Danny, the hockey gods, I was there, I was watching. You guys weren't getting any bounces. The hockey gods were not with you. It was like, wow, I couldn't. I tried to pull some from the sky, Jill. Never happened. I, well, I know you wanted me to ask Don this question, and I know you're a little embarrassed, but Don, for the spring camp, would it be all right if Willie suited up and went out there? And <laughs> he just wants to measure himself against those midget level players. <laughs> well, we are having trials for a mascot, Willie. You know what? I, I, I might, I might be able to do that. I, I could fit that in somewhere. You know what? You know what? I won't be any Benny or Mickey Moose or anything like that. You know, but I think, uh, you know what, Jill? Who was your favorite mascot, Willie? My favorite mascot? Yupi from the Expo. No, no, you're a no. Guy, eh? Greg Hasby. <laughs> it was a top notch. You know, it's so good. Hey, Coach Don, we want to thank you for coming on the Fourth Lines Hockey Show. It's always a pleasure having you here. Thanks, Robbie. And, you know, before we leave, Joe, I think uh, Sonny was wearing the same sweat top as Coach, and I think Coach made him put that on. I heard him say, Sonny, you know what? I'm still got you, but he put that on. <laughs> We're going to break off right now, and once again, it's the Ice Trainers quote of the day. I take that to my winger. Okay, so this is another Wayne Gretzky quote, but, you know, what he said, a good player is around the puck, but a great player knows where the puck is, and he's going to where the puck's going to be. Right back at you, Joe. Coach Don was pretty good. You know, he's always got some, you know, very really good advice for players. And, you know, talking about the you know, junior A in Winnipeg, Coach is a, I like Coach. He knows what he's talking about. Yeah, dedicated guy. Like, you know, obviously loves hockey, loves the community. What, 20 plus years 
You know, that's amazing. You know, and his resume is huge, and he, like you say, he's coached everywhere. Imagine driving to Nipua those couple of years in the middle of February, coming back from there to Winnipeg. That's dedication. Well, you've coached, I've coached. I, I, I think sometimes a lot of people don't understand how much time and effort these guys put in. You know, we're coaching, you know, minor hockey. This, yeah. is, this is not, you know, this is important hockey, elite level. And you know, it, it's a job. It's a full-time job, and it's tough. Well, what's that quote? Coaches are hired to be fired, right? That's a great all he says. You know, you got a lot of pressure. If you're not winning and you're not bringing in people, man, they're going to re replace you. You know, we also had uh, Zach Mercury on in promoting his fun stuff. That was pretty good. And Sonny Manaka, you know, we'll catch you guys next week. The opinions expressed on the program you have just watched are not necessarily those of Shaw Cable Systems or of this station. Through our access policy, we provide the opportunity for community groups and individuals to express their points of view.